Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and we've got a, a multi-step equation to solve here. A um, couple ways I can tell. First of all, the directions say solve the equation. So hey, I love the obvious. But I can also see that it's an equation because I have these two different expressions that are equivalent to each other. So um, since I have that equal sign there, since this is an equation, I can solve for x and figure out what x is equal to. So let us go ahead and do that. So there's actually more than one right way to do this. So if I don't do it the way you would have done it, um, just make sure that we get the same answer. But a great general rule of thumb when solving equations is simplify before you can solve. Do any forwards math before you start that process of getting the letter alone. And so I see some math I know how to do. I know how to take a multiplier and pass it out to all the terms in a grouping that's known as distribution or the distributive property and I'm going to use it right now. I'm going to multiply both the terms in the parentheses by two-thirds. Now great news is you can use your GED calculator if you were doing this on the test so you don't have to actually know how to multiply fractions by hand um, but I know how to multiply fractions by hand or you could type this into your calculator okay but first thing I'm going to do is the two-thirds times the twelve. Now, if I wanted to multiply those, what I would do, I would throw 12 over 1, and then I would just cross-reduce. Uh, both 3 and 12 are divisible by 3, and so 3 divided by 3 gives me 1, 12 divided by 3 gives me 4. Then I would multiply straight across. 2 times 4 is 8, 1 times 1 is 1, and of course 8 over 1 is just 8. So I get 8, 8 what? 8 x's. I was multiplying with x's. So just as easily, 2 thirds can be multiplied by 9. In this case, it's like negative 9. Again, cross-reduce if possible, and I, it is possible. 3 and 9 have a common factor of 3. I'll divide it out of both of them. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. And then, of course, 2 times 3 is 6. 1 times 1 is just 1, and 6 over 1 is just 6. And so I get minus 6. And of course, that whole left-hand side is still equal to 18. Now let me pick up a different color that will work better on my black here. And now let's start the solving process. So I've done as much simplifying as I can do. There's no more work to do on the left-hand side. There never was any to do on the right. It's time to start solving, uh, doing the work to get rid of the numbers that are with x so x can be alone. So first thing I'm going to get rid of is the minus 6 because remember when we're solving, we actually work the order of operations backwards. You should get rid of anything adding or subtracting first. So I am going to add 6. Now this is me disobeying the signs. I'm doing the opposite of what I've been told to do. Super important whenever you do that, you do it to both sides. So you're going to see me add 6 on both sides. And let's see what our new equation will be after making that change to both sides. Subtracting 6 and adding 6 are opposites. Only thing I have left on the left-hand side is 8x. And 8x will be equivalent to whatever I get when I make that change on the right-hand side. So 18 plus 6 is 24. Beautiful. Now uh, to solve for x, now I just need to get rid of this 8. So what is this 8 doing? We'll see how it's all shoved up against x. It's currently multiplying. So we solve by doing the opposite. I'm going to do the opposite of multiplying by 8. I'm going to divide by 8. Now I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. So I'll hop over to the other side, keep my balance. On this side, multiplying and dividing by 8 cancel, so x is alone. And on that side, 24 divided by 8 gives me 3. So what would x have to be in order to make this equation true? x would have to be 3. This equation is solved. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer it.